What's up guys, what's growing on? So I've got a ripe rack of bananas ready to harvest. Let's go get this thing. We're here in 9B, just north of Tampa, Florida, and there's a thousand different varieties of bananas. I grow almost about 40 different varieties here. This one is a dwarf Cavendash. The one we're gonna be cutting down is an Orinoco. It gets to be about 15 foot. A lot of people think a banana is a tree, but it's actually an herbaceous plant. Once this is done fruiting, we're gonna chop this up and just lay it back down around the tree and you constantly have a baby coming up underneath it. Two tools we're gonna to use to cut up the banana, machete and a handsaw. So we got our bananas. This variety is a uh, Orinoco variety. And the best way to actually hang these is this way on the back porch. I say the back porch because it's inside of a screen. It'll keep the bugs away. These can get really black and they're like a dessert banana or they can be used green like a plantain. That's why I use that handsaw. I kind of cut this down about six inches below the soil. And I'm gonna dig out a little hole in the center here. And the, the beetle that actually bores into these bananas is very, very common. They usually come right after you cut it. So in Brazil, you know, they've learned to cut these holes in here. By tomorrow, this is gonna fill with water. So if that beetle does come, that beetle does lay those eggs, those eggs are gonna drown and die. So ideally, we want three bananas on a banana clump and we wanna really manage the mat. That's what that's called. You have one at a fruiting stage, one at mid height and then a baby coming up. And you can see, I just cut this one out of here. That's gonna take that energy and put it towards this big one. We wanna kind of focus that energy into the big banana tree. This way that clump will come a little bit faster. And like I had mentioned, you know, this is all just fertilizer, just constantly feeding it back to the banana. Another pro tip, one of the best things you could feed a banana would be ash off of a fire. It's really high in potassium, obviously bananas produce lots of potassium, so feeding them what they produce really helps out. All the manure you can give them, hardwood mulch, you can't overfeed a banana. Can't give it too much water. Yeah guys, I'm constantly learning too. So I've done a couple of banana videos for you. I just got back from a class in Costa Rica and I learned a pro tip. You guys might've saw me cutting these, you know, these stems in half and you're probably like, why is Pete wasting time doing that? But I found out while I was in Costa Rica from the guys in Brazil, when you actually leave the whole stem intact, laying on the ground, there's an off gas that starts to come off and actually poison the soil. It can chase worms away and different beneficials in the soil. So ideally you split these stems in half and you lay them down flat on the ground. If you noticed when I was cutting up these leaves, I also cut them up into smaller pieces. If we lay big, large pieces down on the ground, it's not gonna allow that water and that rain to get through. So that's why I chop it up a little bit smaller, allowing that water to come down through there. Ideally, these go down on the ground first, laid flat. That's gonna hold moisture. It's gonna feed the soil, and we put those leaves down on top of it. Like I mentioned, you can't overfeed a banana. Any type of manure, um, any type of ash, like I would mentioned, broken down wood mulch, compost. You cannot overfeed these guys. You really can't overwater them, but they don't wanna be in standing water. So with organic agriculture, you know, we're feeding the soil, we're feeding the microbes. The only thing organically that can be sucked up like that for a banana would be like a fish emulsion or urea. I know that kind of sound kind of gross, but if you have a clean diet, like pee on these trees, you will notice a huge difference in the growth. I do this for clients all the time. You know, we put 10 bananas in the backyard. I tell them about this. The one closest to the house is always first to fruit and it's always the biggest banana on the property. All right guys, like I mentioned, we hang these bananas on the back porch inside of the screen cage. And when they're growing on the tree, they grow like this, but when they get really ripe, ripe they have a tendency to hang down and break off. So by hanging them upside down, it extends that hanging life a little bit. I'm actually sending my man Lennon home, who's editing this video and filming for me, with this hand right here. So we call this one hand off the rack of bananas. Um, this variety is an Orinoco. It's a really old cracker variety. It's been in Florida for a long time. I think I had mentioned these can be eaten green as a plantain, yellow as just a regular eating banana, but when they get black, they actually turn orange on the inside and almost become like a, a dessert banana. Um, you can freeze them for smoothies, do whatever you want. Um, really easy to grow, obviously amazing. Grow bananas.